Hello, everyone. So I apologize for being absent for a while. I've had a lot going on with my day job. But the other reason that I have been absent for a while is because my laptop died. So back in 2016, I purchased a Lenovo P50 workstation. It was a uh, laptop, of course, but it was a Intel Xeon 8 core, and it had 64 gigabytes of RAM. And I bought it because I was working for a consulting company, and I had been traveling quite a bit, and I needed something where I could obviously travel with it, but also something that I could run virtual machines on. And that has been serving that purpose ever since towards the end of May when it died. Uh, we still are not 100% sure what happened with it, but it locked up when I was using it and it no longer boots. So this presented me an opportunity. I have been using laptops since 2003. I was issued a laptop at one of the companies I started working for, and I have pretty much switched over to laptops ever since. My last desktop was, I was using, still using this in 2004, 2005, but it was a compact workstation. It was a dual Pentium 3 CPU. And I still have it, I just don't use it anymore. But ever since I got, was issued a laptop, well, I just haven't needed another desktop. So when this died, or my P50 died, I had an opportunity to, to either get another laptop, a high-end laptop, or go with a desktop. I decided to go with a desktop simply because I'm no longer traveling anywhere near the amount that I used to. I haven't traveled now in years. So why spend more money to get a higher-end laptop when I could get a nice built desktop. Uh, my budget was right around $3,000, and I could go above that if I needed to, but I really didn't want to. I wanted to keep this to about three grand. The other consideration I have uh, is that I use Linux as my base OS. So if I'm going to go with another desktop or a laptop, I want to make sure that I'm not going to run into huge amounts of Linux compatibility problems. You all you run into those problems where your Wi-Fi doesn't work or there's a USB port that doesn't work. There's always something when you're using Linux. Even with my P50, I had a pretty good flawless experience, but there were quirks once in a while. So the company that I was looking at and went with is System76. They specialize in Linux laptops, desktops, mini computers, the little little boxes that you can put on your desk, and also servers. They also make their own line of keyboards, and they have their own Linux distribution based on Ubuntu called Pop OS. I have no idea who named it Pop OS. Um, I think it's a ridiculous name, but and then I'll I'll get into the, my long tale of woe when I went to set up this system. Um, <laughs> believe me, it wasn't it wasn't fun or easy. Um, but that's because I use virtual machines. Okay, so let's switch from my Minecraft footage. Now we're looking at System 76's website, and I've already got it on the desktop section. So let's take a look at the their Thelio line of desktops. So one thing you're going to notice is that System76 makes their own cases. They use off-the-shelf components for motherboards, GPUs, CPUs, memory. But the cases and the chassis are all their design, and they're made in Denver, Colorado. So they've got a line here that you can choose from, and I noticed that the Thelio Massive has disappeared. That was a dual CPU Intel Xeon with like 1.5 terabytes of memory. I, I priced one out, maxed it out. I had the price tag up to $61,000. It was like, whoa, that thing's huge. Okay, you can start with the Thelio or the Thelio Mira. 
the Thelio Mira is the one that I went with. This was the one that fit all of my needs. Um, so we'll focus on this one. If you want to take a look at the other ones, I highly recommend them. They do make nice desktops. So let's take a look at the Thelio Mira. This is the one that I chose. They all say Pro Performance. I don't pay any attention. Um, you can choose between AMD or Intel CPUs up to a GeForce 4090 GPU, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And yes, I did go with 128 gigabytes of RAM because of my virtual machines. It's been running them perfectly. Up to 32 terabytes of PCIe uh, 4.0 NVMe storage. I didn't get anywhere near this, but I did get two NVMe drives. And then you have the swappable accent panel. One thing that I really like about System 76's cases, well, they, they are well made. I, I'll give them that. I've been very impressed with the quality. But they are not RGB. They're, you don't have a UFO sitting on your desk, which is what I didn't want. My desktop is sitting under my desk. I am recording this video with my System 76. And because it's under my desk, I don't see it anyway. I see it when I turn it on in the morning and that's it. So I didn't want something that was going to be RGB nuts. And yes, you can build your own without RGB, but, and I, I'm pretty sure the first comments I'm going to get are, well, why didn't you build your own PC? Well, I did a lot of that in college and I don't like it. So I just wanted a well-built desktop to show up at my doorstep. And that's pretty much what happened. All right, so let's take a look at the cooling. So you'll notice that there are some fans at the bottom. So there's a fan hole at the bottom for the power supply, which was an EVGA power supply. And then they have a large uh, 140 millimeter fan here for intake, blows up into the graphics cards. I only have one graphics card, goes up also into the little drive cage that they have for your SATA drives, if you have them, which I do. And then you have your CPU cooler here. So air goes up and then out. And they do have a big exhaust fan up here as well. All right, let's get out of here. Easy serviceability. Yes, I would agree with that too. It's a great little system. Let's just replay this. So they have this little bracket here that holds your graphics card in place. So even during shipment, your graphics card is not going to be bouncing around all inside the case. It's pretty much well secured into the case by this custom bracket that they have. And yes, it does support dual CPU or GPUs if you want. And then also, this little drive cage that they have is really great. If you have SATA drives that you want to put in, which I do, I have I had three, I've put in two. They give you these screws that you put on the side of the uh, SSD, the SATA SSD, and then you just slide it into the cage. That's all you have to do. So you just slide them back in, put the cover back on, you're done. Took me a grand total of about two minutes to put two of my SSDs in this system. I really like how they've done this. Makes serviceability for adding drives really great. You do have these swappable accent colors. I, to me, this is more of just a gimmick. Uh, it does make it, give it its own little personality. Like you'll see, see if I can stop it in time here. This is the one I went with, which is this PCB trace. It looks great. But like I said, I have the system shoved underneath my desk here, so I really don't see it anyway. But I think it is a nice touch. Okay, so let's take a look at, oh, here's some other pictures. This is a picture of the exhaust fan intake on the bottom. There's your drive cage again. The back, which this was very nice. Um, I guess the previous generation of their Thelio line, they didn't have any labels on any of this stuff. You just got a black 
background and that was it. So they did change this to where they are now labeling everything. And also what I thought was a nice touch is if you get a model with a graphics card, you don't need or you're, and you're not supposed to use the HDMI and the display port on the motherboard. They actually put covers inside of these now so that you don't use them and you actually are supposed to plug into the graphics card. Plenty of USB ports, high speed internet. I was pretty happy with it. And they also have this vent on the side, which looks really good. They also have their own keyboard line if you're interested in looking at it. I have two Corsair keyboards, so I really wasn't. And this is the model that I went with here. And I can't open that any further, but this has the accent, and then you have just the power button. Um, one of the criticisms that System76 has gotten over the last few years is that they do not have USB ports on the front or the top of the case at all. So you might look at this as, a, as being a downside. I actually don't. Um, the way to solve this is, and I saw one reviewer of the, of the Thelia line did this. He has a USB hub right on his desk. It's right on the back of his desk, right under his monitor. So if he wants to plug in a USB device, like a flash drive or external hard drive or whatever, he can just plug it right into there. And that's what I would do. I mean, mine is underneath my desk. It's not very easy to plug into. And I got lucky in the fact that several years ago, I bought a BenQ designer's monitor that has a USB hub right in it. So if I want to plug in a flash drive or a, a USB drive, I can just plug it in right to the side. And it, the other bonus is that it has a SD card reader right on the side of the monitor. So I can just put that in there and transfer if I want to transfer between here and the laptop. So no USB on the front uh, or the top didn't bother me at all. It might be a problem for you if you want to have your system on your desk, but USB hubs are really cheap and it's a pretty easy way to solve it. Okay, so let's go ahead and spec. What did I buy? All right, I did go with Intel. I went with their 13th generation. So define your style. I did the etched PCB traces. Like I said, it does look good. Um, again, I can't see it, so who cares? You could take and get different accents that you want. Also, they have this blank aluminum plate that they'll send you where you can pretty much design it your own and then use that as a front panel. Pop OS. So when I originally got the system, I was going to go with Fedora again. And that turned out to be a problem. So right now I am actually running Pop OS. Um, Pop OS with KDE the Plasma desktop, which is what I really like. So it, it whole tale of woe that we'll get into here in a little bit. All right, so for processors, I went with the 13th generation i9-3900K. I did not go with the six gigahertz, the KS, because it was going to be another $134. When all is said and done, with taxes, that would have pushed me over my $3,000 limit. And I decided, well, this CPU is a thousand times bigger than anything I've ever had. I don't think I'm going to be having a problem with it if I just get the, the 5.8 gigahertz. It turns out I was right. Memory, I did pack it with 128 gigabytes. Um, I can now give 32 gigabytes to my virtual machines. I can run several of them at the same time. Not a problem. It's really powerful. It's been great. OS drive. I went with the 500 gigabyte PCIe, the NVMe drive. And I figured the previous in my laptop, what I had was 256 gigabytes for an OS drive. So I doubled it to 500. Additional M.2 NVMe storage, I did get a one terabyte drive and that had them put that in there. 
that is for my virtual machines and also for my Minecraft Bedrock server. Believe me, it, it's unbelievable how well my virtual machines run these days. Additional 2.5 storage, if you want to extra SATA drives, you can order them right here. I did not because I had two SATA drives that I would put in here, one from the old laptop and one from something else. I can't even remember where I got it from, but I had it, so it's in there now. Graphics, I went cheap. So number one, I will not deal with NVIDIA again in my entire life. They are miserable to work with. They do not like Linux. Their Linux drivers on Linux are terrible. I'm not dealing with NVIDIA, so I was going to go AMD and AMD only. Now, I could have gone with an expensive GPU, but I really didn't need it. So I don't game on my laptop, or on my laptop. See how hard it is to break that habit? I don't game on my desktop at all. I just use it for productivity. So I just went with a cheap Radeon RX 6600. And the reason I went with this versus the cheaper, which is like the Radeon RX 6500, is that the RX 6600 is the, the first one that would support multiple monitors. So that's why I went with that. So now I've got, my, I've got both monitors now plugged in here. Um, I do that because I was used to using the laptop screen as a second monitor. Well, with the laptop gone off my desk, I didn't have a second monitor. So I have an older monitor sitting here for now. What I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to get another BenQ monitor um, as, a, as a second monitor. Power supply, I went with 750 watts. That's well over what I needed. Networking, it comes with built-in Intel Wi-Fi, which does seem to be working pretty well now. There's another tale of woe. Um, you can also get these with their launch keyboards and get it with displays. I wouldn't recommend getting a display from uh, an integration company like this. You can find better deals. And a warranty, I just want the one year parts and warranty. Yeah, Canada shipping or Canada warranty to a ground shipping. That's if you're in Canada, obviously. Assembly. And assembly says ships within 10 business days. So that's business days, that's not weekends. I ordered the system, I believe, right before the Memorial Day weekend. And they said it would take between 7 and 10 to ship. It shipped right on the 10th day. So I'll give them credit. I mean, they must be building a lot of these uh, for it to take 7 to 10 business days. But it did. It shipped right on the 10th day. Recycling, you can actually send your system to them to recycle if you want to. I didn't do this. So what I landed up with is a configuration total of mine was 2700 and I believe that's because the base price is actually on sale. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little bit off. So mine was a little bit more expensive. And then, of course, you have to add taxes and you have to add shipping. So it pushed it right up to $2,900. So I was able to get it right at my budget, which was under $3,000. Now, again, I can probably hear some of you saying, oh my God, why didn't you build your own system? I hate building systems. I don't want to build my own box and I don't want an RGB UFO sitting under my desk. So I, I like this case design. Seems like a decent company. So that's what I went with. All right, now on to the tales of woe. What went wrong? Well, on my P50 workstation, I was running Fedora, and I run VMware uh, Workstation Professional for my virtual machines. I was running um, Fedora on my spare laptop and also VMware Workstation, no problem. When I got this system, and I received this system last Friday, I didn't start working on, on, on working on it until Saturday afternoon. So I, I wiped the system. 
I put Fedora 38 on it, put KDE Plasma. I moved a lot of my stuff over to it. And then I tried my virtual machines. And it looked like VMware Workstation was installing, but I couldn't, my virtual machines had no networking. I spent hours trying to figure out why it was not working. So then I said, okay, um, I put on System 76's Pop OS, which I have tried it in the past. I'm not a huge fan of the GNOME interface. And yes, I say GNOME. If they want it pronounced a GNOME, then they should put an A in it. So it's GNOME to me. It's been GNOME since 1998. And anyway, I tried Pop OS. I don't, I don't like the interface. I don't like GNOME or GNOME. I, I'm going to say GNOME. And I just, I didn't want to use it. So I tried uh, Linux Mint again. I've had good success with Linux Mint in the past. And yes, that did seem to work. However, I had to jump through hoops to put System76's drivers on. And then on Sunday morning, I had no sound. And I couldn't get my sound back. And you would think that'd be something simple. I have a very high-end pair of speakers, amplified speakers on my desk. It, they're just USB connected. I could not get them to work again, no matter what I did. So I just went back to Pop! OS. Now, granted, this is not a simple process. It, it takes me a while to copy these things over. But I did put uh, Pop! OS back on. I did find that you can put a newer version of KDE Plasma versus what comes from Ubuntu. Uh, they do offer the ability. There's a PPA for doing so. I was able to put KDE Plasma on the way I like it. It's newer, so I can customize it the way that I like it. And my virtual machines work. Uh, my virtual machines have networking. Everything works in the VM. My sound hasn't gone out since. Um, I did have some problems with my networking. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what goes on in my house with this wireless network, but the 5 gigahertz band never seems to work reliably. Um, the 2.4 gigahertz band always seems to work reliably, reliably. So that's what I've been using now for several days, and I haven't had a network disconnect my virtual machines haven't disconnected their network or anything so it's been it's been a good experience the last three days I, i'd say that i finally ironed out all of the issues uh, about three four days ago so in conclusion would i recommend system 76 yes yes i would um, they make an excellent desktop and part of the reason i think that I really like it so much is I really do like the case. The case looks great. Um, if you're looking for a laptop and you're also looking for a Linux based laptop, they have a whole Linux laptop line. And I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on one of those as well. Um, although it's kind of hard to justify because I don't travel very much, but when I do, I do need a, a laptop and they look like they have a good offering. There's been some good reviews out there. So anyway, it's system76.com. Go ahead and check them out. And hopefully, I will be able to start making more programming content here soon. And hopefully, life calms down a little bit. And other than that, happy coding.